Let's talk about how to create some more complex digital interactive notebook pages. So we're going to talk about how to do some labeling and annotating activities on pages. Essentially, you're going to need to create just a page exactly like we have done in previous videos. I will link a video below about how to do that. I have made it the background so that students cannot edit it except for these boxes here and the point of this activity is I just want them to label which um, rhetorical appeal is being used so for instance um, you know this example would be logo students would be able to just drag this over and label it like that so let's talk about how you can do that now you'll see I actually left room on the page for these labels to go. I didn't want students to cover up the answers because they're using these as study guides. So I left some space for them to do that. So make sure you do that when you make your uh, background page. So let's talk about how to make these little boxes. They may look fancy, but they're literally just text boxes with color in the background. So if I go up here to insert, I can then go to text box. I can drag it. It really doesn't matter what size it is because you're going to resize it later anyway. And then I'm going to type whatever I want it to say. So just for an example, I'm going to type rhetoric. I'm going to pick my font and my size, whatever I want it to be. I'm going to center all of it because I care about that. And then I'm going to put a border around it. So I use four point black and then you pick a fill color so I may pick just this orange and there you have a button now if I drag this one over it doesn't actually fit so I would need to make it smaller oops that's too small and that's just something you kind of have to play around with because if you notice this still doesn't fit so I may need to make my font smaller and I can drag it and I like to test stuff because we never know if things work until we test it and we want to test it before the kids do so we can problem solve now I just leave them off to the side over here because students can drag them from the sidebars onto the page now if I go to present mode they're not going to be able to see them but that's okay because they're not going to be in present mode they're going to be like this and then they would just drag it over now I told them they need to copy and paste the rhetorical appeal from the sidebar but I've actually found a workaround for this um, because if you see if I label this one as ethos I don't know if it is or not but if I label this one as ethos now ethos has disappeared and you can see there's 10 on here so they're going to use these three multiple times so pocket full of primary Michelle just posted a video about this and she suggested that you highlight these copy them and then paste and you put a few copies over top of each other and what that's going to do is let me do it a couple times so that's like four times now when a student drags this over another one will still be there and they won't need to copy and paste which it's not that complicated for high schoolers, but if you were elementary or middle school, that may be helpful to them. So it kind of looks like there's like infinite of them there for them to drag. So that is one way that you can annotate on pages. Another way is you can have students insert lines or circles or whatever. So for this one, they are going to determine what's being used and then they're going to need to draw a line for it so I gave them directions about how to do that but I will walk you through it so they will just pick line from this top bar and then let's say they were going to say um, I'll just draw it across and then they can pick how big they want it to be and what color they want it to be so they may want it to match um, so let's say they say that's pathos and so they will just label it like that um, and then they can move this line around if they need to or make it smaller 
So that's one way that they can annotate. I will say if you don't teach them to make the line pretty big, it's kind of hard to see. So that's too big. Um, let's do eight. That's a little bit better. So this one is a little bit harder to see, but it's another way you can annotate things. They also can um, insert shapes. So for instance, let's say you wanted them to put a square around the pathos or something. So they could just draw a square around this box. And then as you'll see, it fills it in as white. So they would need to go in and do transparent. But now they have a box around it. That's kind of, that line color is not helpful. So now they've drawn a box around it and you can do that with any of these shapes. Um, let's say you told them they need to circle the this, right? They could do this and then they would have a circle around something. So you can set up the parameters that you want them to have for this. You may say put a circle around the logos, put a box around this. The only thing I would say is you may need to give them directions like I did here in order to show them how to do that. Another thing you could do is have them actually highlight the text. However, this is something you need to determine ahead of time because there's going to be one thing that you have to do differently. So if kids are going to highlight text, if we've made the backgrounds like we have previously where the words are, you can't highlight words because they're the background. So what I did was I did the background and then, see here, then I put the box with the text over top of that. And now students can actually highlight on the text. And then I gave them directions of what I want them to highlight. And I showed them what the, bu the button looks like. So let's say, um, you'll see here I've got some different types of persuasive language techniques and so this would be a rhetorical question so they would highlight it they would look over here rhetorical question is orange so they're gonna go to highlight and then they're gonna pick orange and you can see now it matches and I can see that they know that this is a rhetorical question now obviously students could accidentally mess up the text box but I do think um, for this type of labeling activity, um, highlighting is a lot more simple for students than to do all of this. This takes a little bit more time, whereas the highlighting is they just highlight, hit the highlight button, pick the color, and they're done. Now, I gave them this key so I can make sure that everybody's um, is the same and matches. But, you know, you, that can be up to you. I would say try to alleviate student choice as much as you can with things like this because we want it to be easy for you to grade. And if you've graded a lot of these and you know that green is loaded words, then that may make it a little bit easier for you. So you may have to brainstorm and think about what are some cool ways you can use these types of pages, but there is probably a million different ways that you can use them. So you can do highlighting, you can do inserting shapes or lines in order for them to annotate on a text, and you can also do labeling.